Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be solving the lead code question uh, number 48, rotate image. All right, so over here we're going to be given a n by n two-dimensional matrix which represents an image and the goal is to rotate the image by 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. So we have to rotate the image in place, which means that you just modify the input to the matrix directly without allocating any extra space. So obviously, let's say we have this example of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and when you rotate it, so 90 degrees, right? So you can just imagine everything moving like this, right? Like an image. And what you get is this result over here. So let's actually try to see if there's any sort of pattern that we can recognize, which allows us to come up with a solution to this, okay? So we have these two examples here, and let's just start off with a smaller one, right? So just try to imagine it first in your head, right? So you have this image and you're rotating it. So how do the pixels move? So you can just think of these uh, values as pixels, right? So essentially, in this case, what's happening is this one, two, and three, when you rotate it, it comes like this. So in very simple words, the first row that we have over here ends up becoming the last column. Okay, so let's just kind of write this relationship. So whatever the first row was, or actually let's just use zero indexing. So the zeroth row becomes the last column. Okay, cool. Um, so let's just move on with that. So the four, five, six, let's rotate it. And what happens is that becomes the last but one row. Okay, so in other words, the first row ends up becoming the last but one, I'll just write that as last minus one column, okay? And over here we have the last row over here, the second row, and that ends up becoming the last but two uh, column, okay? And so let's just write that relationship. The second row ends up becoming the last, I'll just write but two as minus two column. Cool. So we kind of found this relationship, and if you look at the four by four over here, it, it, it's the same thing, right? So this it's nothing else but the last column, 51911, 51911. And the relationship just goes on. So uh, let's just write it for the four by four. So now everything stays the same, except we have one more thing, which is the third row becomes the last minus three column, okay? And you can think of the first one as last minus zero column. So we have this very direct uh, relationship and we kind of want to code this out, right? So we understand what we want to code and now we just want to see how can we actually do this. So uh, let's just focus on the 4x4 four four, since it is a bit bigger so we can look at it a bit more better. So over here, we've understood that this is what we want to code. Now, how exactly can we do this? Uh, so just to kind of show you the relationship, right? You can just think of this, or actually, uh, let's just go back to the 3x3. Three three. So over here, you can just kind of think of this as a circle, right? So the 1 goes over here, the 3 goes over here, the 9 goes over here, and the seven goes over here. Likewise, the two takes place of six, six takes place of eight, eight to four, four to two, and the five stays as it is. You can see the same relationship over here with the four by four. Now, you could code this relationship out, but that is going to be a lot harder to do. And I think it's a lot easier to just code the relationship that we found out in the beginning, okay? So how exactly are we going to do this? So what I want to do is I want to add a few more elements to this, so uh, just so it's easy for us to look at. So the last uh, minus zero column is nothing else but the last column, which is the third column, okay? The same way, there's the second column, there's the first column, and there's the zero column, okay? I'm just writing it so that's easier for us to uh, interpret, okay? Cool. So how exactly can we do this? So one thing that we could do is we could transpose the values. So if you don't know what that means, it's uh, uh, so if you have x comma y, after transposing it, you would have y comma x. Okay, and what that really does, if you just look at it at a broader perspective, it takes the first column and it makes that the first row, and so on and so forth. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to take five one nine eleven. So that's the first row, and when you transpose it, that that's going to look like this. 5, 1, 9, and 11. And uh, just so it's easy for you to understand, so this was at the index 0, 1, and when you transpose it, it's at the index 1, 0, as you can see. Okay, so let's just do that for the other rows. So 2, 4, 8, 10. So when you transpose that, you get 2, 4, 8, and 10. Uh, then you have 13, 3, 6, 
7, and finally 15, 14, 12, 16. So this is what I get after transposing our matrix, okay? So what exactly has happened? So let's just use this color. So what happened is the zeroth row, okay, has now become the zeroth column, okay? Now the first row, so let's just write this after transposing the column, okay? So the zeroth row has become the zeroth column, right? The first row has become the first column, the second row has become the second column, and finally the third row has become the third column. Now, has this rotated our matrix? Well, not yet, but we have gotten closer. So now what we can do is very simple, right? So now that we have these, the zeroth row as the column and the zeroth column, we just need to get it in this order over here. And we can do that very simply. And that is just by swapping out the columns themselves, right? So if you swap out this column and the last column, what happens is now the zeroth row is the third column, right? Which is exactly what we're looking for. And we can do the same over here. We just swap these two out. So this is exactly how we're going to solve our question. So first we're going to transpose it. So all the rows become the columns. And then what we're going to do is we're going to swap them. So the zero, so we're going to swap these two, and then we're going to swap these two. So by doing this, it's going to be a lot easier to code out the solution, and we're going to end up rotating our matrix. So let's see what this looks like in code. All right, so we have two parts to this. So first, we've got to transpose our matrix, and then what we have to do is we have to uh, swap the columns, okay? So cool, let's start with the first part. So we're going to first iterate through the rows. So for i in range, length of matrix, and we're going to do the same thing now for the columns. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, uh, this is actually wrong, but let me just show you why. Okay, so essentially we're going to have matrix ij, and that is going to get swapped with, so now that is going to have the value of matrix ji. So since we are swapping the values, we got the same for ji. So matrix ji is now going to have the value of matrix ij. Okay, cool. So now this is what looks correct, but there is a small mistake with this. So let me just show you that. So I just wrote the small thing here. So for i in range 3, for j in range 3, print i comma j and then j comma i, right? So 0, 0 after transposing becomes 0, 0, which is correct. 0, 1 becomes 1, 0 and 0, 2 becomes 2, 0. So all of that currently makes sense. And now we have a small problem. So over here we have 1, 0 becomes 0, 1. And the reason that it's a problem is because that now the what we swapped over here is now getting swapped back again. So essentially, it's just going back to its original position. So essentially, if you run this line of code over here, what you had before and after running these four loops is going to be the same. So a simple fix to this is we could just have i over here, right? So in that way, we're not going to have any overlap. Cool. So now that we've transposed our matrix, we're going to swap them. So let's get the columns first. So for j in range length of matrix. Now, we're not going to get each and every value. We're not going to go through each and every column. And the reason for that is because the zeroth column gets uh, replaced with the last column. So essentially, we just need to do halfway, right? And if you go to the ending, um, that's not actually going to work. Uh, so we just go halfway. And we can just do integer division. And uh, this is going to ignore the odd value, which is completely fine because that is going to stay as it is. Uh, cool. And now let's iterate through our row. So we're going to get all the row values. So that's going to stay. We're going to get all of them, right? Okay, cool. So now what we do is we take matrix ij. And now what is the value over here going to be? So let's say i is 0. We now have to get the last column's value in that same row, okay? So the row stays same, but the column changes. And essentially, it's the length of the matrix. I'm going to do minus 1 because over here, we are going to be working with the index values. Uh, so the last index is going to be the length of matrix minus 1. And we're going to subtract that by the current J value we're on. So if J is 1, we're going to get the last but 1 matrix and so on and so forth. Okay. And since we are swapping the values, this is also. So now this is going to get the value of matrix IJ. And that should be it. So let's submit our solution. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions.